on today's video, notes, action, action, should get one of those, take two. <laughs> Hi everyone, thank you so much for clicking to watch this video. If you're new here, my name is Sandy and on this channel we talk about all things interior design. You're going to want to stay till the end of this video because I'm going to be giving away a starter kit that's a perfect resource for design students and people looking to get started in the design industry. So it is day uh, 472 of quarantine and we are all slowly losing our minds. I know so many of you are stuck at home and need something to do, so give these books a try. They'll help you gain some of that design knowledge that you're either missing out on because perhaps your school was delayed or whatever program you were going to start uh, was delayed. These books will give you some of the insight of what you're going to be learning and just help you get started in your design business. These books are a great starting point, not just for students, but for people looking to get into design. The first book is Home, The Foundations of Enduring Space. This is a book based on the curriculum from the New York School of Interior Design. That school is actually ranked fifth in the most admired design schools according to the Design Intelligence Rankings. What I like most about this book is how it breaks down everything. There are separate sections for every single room that would be in a house, and then it goes over separate elements that would be in every single one of those rooms. From woodworking to lighting to fabric, it really goes over step by step how you would approach a design. Which makes sense given that it's based off a curriculum taught in a design school. The second book you should consider getting is the Interior Design Reference and Specification book. Unlike the previous book I mentioned, this book really does a deep dive into project management, which is a huge part of being an interior designer. It also dives into drawing basics and building codes. In the project management chapter, it even details contracts what should be in your contract, and the common mistakes that people make when drawing up a contract. In the drawing chapter, it goes over common drafting tools that you would need, so drafting as in drawing a floor plan, and how to use those drafting tools. I have a video, two videos actually, on school supplies that you need as a design student. I will put a card up here and link them below. So some of those tools that I'm going to mention to you in this book, I will link to them on Amazon so that you can get those delivered to you as well if you're looking to get started on your school supplies list or if you're just looking to starting the drawing process and getting some practice. Now getting back to the book, that drawing chapter also goes over the basic kind of symbols you would see on a floor plan and what all those different symbols mean. And if you want to get really nerdy, really nerdy. If you want to get really nerdy, there's even a chapter that goes over building codes in ADA. ADA stands for the Americans with Disabilities Act. There is classes or there are classes on code and they're super tedious and sometimes looked at as kind of the boring side of interior design, but codes in ADA are the guiding principles when you're designing a space, especially a commercial space. Residential has a lot more leeway. Getting a head start on those codes and trying to wrap your head around that, especially if you want to go into commercial design, is going to be a huge plus for you, especially if you're doing it before you even get to school or if you're doing it, um, even if you're being self-taught on your own and you don't intend on going to school because you don't have to go to school to have a successful business, this is a really, really great resource. In the Building Coach chapter, you would find how wide a doorway should be, how tall a kitchen counter should be, how long a ramp for a wheelchair should be, or how um, how big a handicap bathroom should be. Speaking of building codes, that brings me to our third book, Time Saver Standards for Interior Design and Space Planning. So this is not the kind of book that you would read cover to cover. It's really just an encyclopedia, a reference book. You just kind of like a dictionary. You don't read a dictionary cover to cover. You just like look up a thing, you find it, and then you put the book back. A lot of schools will have this kind of resource in their library and designers will have it in their offices. In it, you can find things like different types of furniture names and the historical period that that piece of furniture is associated with, like early American colonial versus Victorian furniture. And you can find those building codes I was talking about earlier, like how tall something should be, how wide something should be, how far you should space lights apart in the ceiling. 
Architects have this book, designers have this book, contractors, builders, people who are in the business of building the spaces that we live and work in. This is like a Bible of details for interiors. Keeping in the realm of space planning, that brings me to our fourth book, The Interior Plan, Concepts and Exercises. Unlike other books that discuss different parts of design and step-by-step, -step, this book is about one topic only, space planning. Space planning is a huge, huge part of interior design. It's not just where to put your furniture, it's where to put all of the walls too. For example, in my space planning class that I took in school, we were given a project where we had all four walls of a facility and then it was completely blank inside. And we were told, okay, it has to have three offices, a, a reception area, two bathrooms, two storage closets, and you had to figure out where all those interior walls were gonna go and how you were gonna make that space, how you were gonna literally plan out that space. Okay, the hallway's here, the entrance is here, and all that. What's special about this book is that it has actual exercises for you. You're not just reading this book and then trying to remember everything. You're reading and then doing, and then reading and doing to help reinforce what it was that you just learned. I love that this book has both residential and commercial spaces and exercises for those. So not only are you gonna space plan a home, you're also gonna space plan a restaurant or an office in this book as well. So if you're really, really looking for exercises, this is a good, good hands-on book. Our last book is Branding Plus Interior Design, Visibility and Business Strategy for Interior Designers. So I first learned about this book in my interview with Ashley Esprit. That's the interview I have left. I'll, I'll put a card in here and then put at the bottom as well, link at the bottom. And we talked about tips on how to get a job and she mentioned this book to me as one that she would recommend to you guys and I went and took a look at it and was like, oh wow, I really would recommend this book too. Unlike all the other books that I talked about, this book is not about how to design a space, how to decorate, or the different steps of a design process. This is a book about business. When you're in school for design, there's a lack of entrepreneurial teachings. And that can make people feel really discouraged because when you're in the field and you're about to graduate, it's either like two options that you can go to. You can go to work for someone else at the firm or you can go the entrepreneurial route and start your own business. People are always scared to start their own business because they're concerned that they're not gonna get clients and they have no idea how that's gonna happen. And there's more safety with a firm, but there's more potential for growth when you go out on your own. Also, not everybody wants to go on their own. Some people just want to go work nine to five and that's totally fine. But for those of you who really want to start your own business, this is a great, great book for you. This book is all about positioning yourself to create a strong brand and attract the clients that you want. It has everything from interviews with successful designers about their insights on branding to how to set up your online presence. So how important is your website and your newsletter that you send out? How do you utilize Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram to help you brand and grow your business? Should you offer e-design in your business or not? And when you get that dream client, what do you do with them? How do you educate the client when you get them? And then how do you continue that communication process from the time that they sign that contract to when the project is over. This book is here to run you through all of those things and just help you feel more confident in running your own business. That concludes the portion of this video that's about books. Now let's get to that free resource I promised. So this free resource comes to you from Leah Alexander, the principal owner of Beauty is Abundant. It is their Beauty is Abundant starter kit that's a really great resource for people looking to get started in design. Leah started a business on her own and this is really kind of a guide to help you decide if you want to start a business on your own and it has some interactive items for you so you can try your hand at building a budget or you can get your hands on the design questionnaire that she uses to determine what it is that her clients need. When I learned about this resource, I thought it would be so, so great for my audience and advantageous for you guys to have. And after speaking with her, she let me give away five of the starter kits for free <laughs> to the first five people who DM me about this. So when you watch this video, shoot me a DM and then I will put you in contact with her to get your free kit. Again, this is called the Beauty is Abundant Starter Kit and it has three main parts. Discovering the entrepreneurship in you, the budget building tool, and the questionnaire, the consultation questionnaire to help you decide what it is that your client is really looking for. 
I cannot stress enough how awesome it is that she has this tool available and that she's allowing me to give away at least five of them for free to you guys. I really hope that you find it really valuable. Please uh, send me your DMs. Again, it's gonna be the first five people and I'm gonna put you in contact with her to get what it is that you need. But this is so, so awesome for those of you that are just getting started. She's a real life designer who had to build her own business from scratch and is giving you some resources to help you decide if you wanna do the same thing. And that concludes this video in total, guys. All right, I really hope that this is valuable to you and that you're able to read some of these things while you're all quarantined up. <laughs> and it helps to give you an advantage and an edge when you're going out into the design world. Uh, please make sure to give this a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, okay? Beyonce said, if you like it, put a ring on it. I say, if you like it, subscribe. I don't even need a ring, just hit that subscription. So much cheaper, why not? Just right there. And don't forget to sign up for my email list because I will be giving out some goodies as well. The goodie I mentioned is from Leah's website. I will put her website down below. And again, my first five people to DM me will get it for free. But I also have my own goodies that I'm going to be building for you guys to be giving away. So I've linked my website down below as well. Thank you so much. Bye guys.